Equilibrium is a very important concept in general chemistry and there are a lot of ways we can look at it and think about it. To get us started, let's look at just a simple energetic model where we look at the energy of products and reactants. So first of all, just remember, equilibrium is a dynamic process. That means that it's always moving. Things are always reacting from the reactant side to the product side, from the product side to the reactant side. When something reaches equilibrium, nothing has stopped. It's just that the rate moving forward and the rate moving in the reverse direction are the same. So it balances itself out. Always start with a very simple model. Let's look at A goes to B. That's about as simple as we can get. And let's say that A and B are even the same energy. Let's make it super simple. So if we look down here, I've got the energy of A represented by this horizontal line, the energy of B represented by this horizontal line. They are at the same energy level and between them, there's some activation energy that separates them. When we think about things moving forward, we can look at a forward rate law expression. Let's assume it's first order where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to K, the rate law constant, times the concentration of A. So at the beginning of the experiment, relatively speaking, we have a lot of A present. So that concentration of A is high, which means that relatively speaking, the rate of the reaction is high. Things are moving in this direction pretty quickly, relatively speaking. As we start to make some B, then the backwards reaction of B going to A starts to happen. Initially, it might be pretty slow, but it'll speed up as we get more and more B present in the solution. Now, as A slows down, or as the reaction of A slows down and the reaction of B speeds up, eventually we'll get to a point where those two rates are equal. And at that point, the concentration of A and B won't change, even though this reaction is happening in both directions constantly. That's what we mean when we say that the system is in equilibrium. Let's take a little bit closer rate law look at how um, we're going to work with this. So if I think about that equilibrium constant, the rate laws that we have here are the rate law for the forward reaction, the green arrow, and the rate law expression for the reverse reaction, the red arrow of B going back to A. When we reach equilibrium, those two rates are equal. And just a little mathematical manipulation here, if this is equal to that, then this is equal to that. So if rate forward equals rate reverse, then K forward times A at equilibrium is equal to K reverse times B at equilibrium. We can rearrange that, group our Ks and our concentrations, and get to this expression. K forward over K reverse is equal to the concentration of B over the concentration of A. And since these are both constants, let's just call that one constant, big K, the equilibrium constant. Now we started with a pretty simple system. We started with A going to B. They're both the same energy. Everything's first order and well behaved. What happens when things get a little less simple? We can think about it in terms of those energy levels. Again, we're looking at this in an energetic way. So if A and B aren't equal, now let's say A is at a higher energy than B. That means the forward activation energy is smaller than the reverse activation energy. So I'm going to start making some A and I'm going to send a bunch of it over to B. And B is still going to react. It's still going to go back, but it's going to go back more reluctantly. It's got a bigger barrier. So when this reaches equilibrium, I'm going to have more B. I'm going to have more substance at the lower energy. And that means that if I have a higher concentration of B than A, the value of my equilibrium constant will be greater than one because B is in the numerator, A is in the denominator. If the opposite situation is true, I've got A at a lower energy than B. Again, when this starts, I'm going to be reacting A, throwing it over that hill to get to B, but it's easier for B to throw back 
in the other direction. When this reaches equilibrium, there's going to be more A present than B. If there's more A present, that means my denominator is larger. If my denominator is larger, then my value of the equilibrium constant will be less than one. Looking at these nice, simple little systems where I just have A going to B is, is great conceptually, but we're probably going to be dealing with a little bit more complex reactions than just A goes to B. Fortunately for us, uh, we could go through a whole bunch of math, but I don't want to do that today. Um, if you're really interested, we can look at it some other time, but if you go through all the math that's involved, we get to a point where for any chemical equation, we can write an equilibrium constant expression based on that balanced chemical equation. So this is another one of these places where writing a balanced chemical equation is an important skill. Once we have that balanced chemical equation, we can write out an equilibrium constant expression of products each raised to their power over reactants each raised to their power. So keep that in mind. But one of the things that I, that I always tell people is don't forget this part. At its heart, equilibrium and equilibrium constant is products over reactants. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about how some of these systems are behaving. So just to hit this one more time, when we're looking at the value of the equilibrium constant, if K is large, if K is greater than one, then we call that a product favored equilibrium. If K is small, less than one, then we're dealing with a reactant favored equilibrium. Now, one of the problems that we always run into with equilibrium constants is how do we really describe large and small? Those are relative terms and depending on what we're talking about, they can mean different things. So again, keep in mind this equilibrium constant expression and form. So first of all, we know that a concentration must be a positive number. It doesn't make much sense to say that the concentration of something is negative six. So those all have to be positive and non-zero positive numbers. So if I take a ratio of positive non-zero numbers, the result is a positive non-zero number. So my equilibrium constant value always has to be positive and not zero. If we have a situation, if we have a reaction where K is equal to one or close to one, then we probably wouldn't really describe that as an overly product favored or reactant favored equilibrium. And this is where we get to the heart of what, I, what we're talking about here large and small. What does it mean to be close to one? When we're talking about equilibrium constants, it's usually best, it's usually most reasonable to use scientific notation because these can get really big. 2.8 times 10 to the 15th is certainly a large equilibrium constant. This is much greater than one. 12.9 really isn't that big. And in the world of equilibrium constants, 12.9 isn't that much bigger than one. Yes, this is product favored, but it's not all that product favored. The other thing that you know we should keep in mind when we're thinking about equilibrium constants, it seems like, it feels like there are a lot more numbers greater than one than there are between zero and one. But mathematically speaking, there are just as many numbers between zero and one as there are between one and infinity. So don't feel like reactant favorite is getting shortchanged by having fewer values. All right, well, that's a first pass through equilibrium and equilibrium constants. One thing when you're working with equilibrium, as with many other topics, equilibrium takes practice. You have to look at a lot of these problems to get comfortable with what they're really trying to show, what they're, what they're really demonstrating, um, and how to work with them. With, with practice, they certainly do get much easier. So always take any opportunity you have to get a little bit of practice on working these problems. Good luck, and again, keep practicing.